The start to any process for growing mushrooms is media treatment. And with this process, growing mushrooms on straw, uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can treat the media. I did a SARE grant back in 2015. SARE is Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education. And we tested four different methods of treatment um, growing oyster mushrooms on straw. Um, this process is really great for doing at home. It's easy, it's fast, and it can produce uh, high quality mushrooms. So the four treatment methods that we looked at were lime and wood ash, fermentation, and pasteurization. We didn't look at steam, but that is another option for treating straw um, and other substrates. So the first one, lime, wood ash, and before we go into each of these processes, it's really good to chop the straw. So typically when straw is in a bale, it is about uh, 12 to 14 inches long. <clears throat> and it's really helpful to chop up the um, straw so that it's about uh, two to three inches long. So it's a lot finer, it can be packed more tightly, and the mushroom mycelium can access the straw a lot more easily. Um, now the other thing is to differentiate between straw and hay. Unless you've been in animal husbandry a, a bunch, there's probably not much of a difference to you. But there is a difference, and it is important for mushroom cultivation. Straw does not have developed seed heads present. Hay does have seed heads present. And this is important because seeds are really dense in nutrients. So if you want to use any of these, the first four treatment methods, you want low nutrient materials. So the seed heads will contaminate still when using those methods um, and ruin the whole uh, bag. So it's really important to get straw instead of hay. Okay, so the first process is using lime. And what happens here is a 16-hour lime soak. You want to make sure to use hydrated lime with under 10% Magnesium. Magnesium inhibits mycelial growth, so when there's more than 10%, the mycelium won't grow out. On the bottom right is a really good picture of a label of the type of lime that you can use. You can see it's hydrated lime, and the magnesium content is only 0.45, well below 10%. Um, this is a brand that you can buy online, high yield. Um, and get about, I think you can get like a pound or two and a half pounds really, really easily. Now, what, ha what we do is add the lime to the water and it increases the pH of the solution up to 12 to 13, 12 or 13. And then this pH bursts the cell walls of the microorganism. So the whole purpose of the treatment phase is to make a clean palate for the mushroom mycelium to grow out into. Now, what are these proportions like? How do we get a pH of 12 to 13? Well, you can use a little strip test, right? The strip tests are only like five bucks for a bunch of them, so pretty cheap. Um, the ratio that we used was one gallon of hydrated lime to fill a 55 gallon drum full of straw. So we would take a 55 gallon drum, fill it with, um, with chopped straw that was packed into um, like the coffee bags, burlap sacks, and a couple bricks on top. And then we would mix the, uh, wood, the lime in a five gallon bucket with water and slowly fill up that 55 gallon drum until all of the straw was submerged in water. So you want to make sure the straw is completely submerged and it just stays there for 16 hours. You don't have to do anything. You can just kind of hang out and let it, let it go. Um, and then 
at the after 16 hours, you just dump the water out. You can use a, a another uh, a base a basic um, neutralizing agent if you would like, um, or just dump it onto like wood chips or something that that will slow how quickly the water gets into the water table, and the lime will just leach out. Um, now with wood ash, it's the exact same process, but instead of hydrated lime, you use wood ash. So maybe if this winter you're burning a lot of wood, it's been really, really cold in your wood stove, you can use that wood ash in order to treat the uh, straw. Okay, the next method is called stinky straw fermentation. And what this is, is a three to seven day submergence in water. So you do the exact same thing with the straw, um, chop it up, put it into a burlap sack, submerge it in water, and leave it there for three to seven days. And you'll know when it's ready. It really, really, it really smells, um, it smells like a strong fermentation. And the, the time range all depends on temperature. So if you're, if it's really hot in the middle of summer, it's going to go really, really quickly. If it's much colder in the fall or spring, the fermentation process will take a little bit longer. Now this process is where we got the lowest yields typically and is, mo is best done using a really high inoculation rate and, and an aggressive strain. And then the last process is called pasteurization after Louis Pasteur. And that's keeping the substrate, the straw in this case, at two hours between 145 to 175 degrees. So pasteurization doesn't go above 175 degrees. It doesn't start to waken the thermophilic organisms, organisms that live in that 175 to 212 uh, temperature zone. Um, and this is what's typically used in uh, mushroom cultivation for straw and provides pretty good yields um, and you can use other substrates other than straw as well which is a really nice benefit. Um, the only downside is it kind of takes a long time and it uses a good amount of propane fuel. Um, so those are the, the two downsides that uh, I experienced. Now here's a table illustrating the yields uh, uh, with biological efficiency um, with the different treatments and the um, uh, different strains on the left. So we use six different strains and four different treatments. You can see the fermentation was consistently the lowest yielding. Lime um, was consistently pretty good. Uh, we had a couple of two couple of big ones, 65, 58, 60 percent, all, all really good. Um, heat was mm, okay, it was pretty good. And then wood ash um, on average was pretty low. We had this one big time outlier of 63 uh, percent with the pink oysters. And the pink oyster is a very aggressive strain. So that's probably why that one had so much uh, success. And this is just a graph illustrating the same thing. You'll notice the red bars are typically pretty high. That is the lime. So we have the lime on Elm A and 3015 and pink, all up in around 60% biological efficiency uh, within about a month. Um, so those yields were, were pretty good and relatively easy to replicate. 